Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm excited that we are kicking off a new series today here at City Point Community Church. Thank you so much, those of you that are visiting with us for joining us today. Those of you that are members of City Point, it is awesome to see you all virtually. Thank you so much for continuing to, um, to just run with us and stay with us for the long haul as we have been doing our thing during the pandemic. Uh, and prayerfully, this has not just been a good placeholder for you uh, during the pandemic, but hopefully we've been able to uh, empower you and, and to continue to develop you spiritually during this time. So we're kicking off a brand new series today. Uh, it is titled Life Stages, and we're going to be on this, this series for seven weeks. It is our series that endeavors to dive into all the different uh, phases of life and stages of life. Um, that we find ourselves moving through from single to dating, to being engaged, to being married, to being married with children, uh, to caring for aging parents. And so we're gonna talk about all of these different uh, life stages throughout this series. I pray that all of it hits everybody uh, in some way. And this is a really, really dope series to be able to reach out to your friends and your family, invite them to come in, be a part of what we're doing, um, hear the stuff that you are being blessed with week after week. And so today we are starting off with our singles. We're actually going to do two weeks for our singles. Um, we're kicking off with singles today. I want to take us to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, verse 8 for our passage of scripture. Uh, before jumping into the scripture, I'm going to bow for a word of prayer and then we'll jump right into it. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much uh, for uh, giving us this chance to come together uh, and now a chance to hear your word. I pray, God, that you will preach through me uh, to these your people in a way that is meaningful and that is powerful to them. Um, let this not be a demonstration of intellect. Let this not be a demonstration of a way with words, but let it be a demonstration of power and of spirit. Uh, let uh, ultimately uh, the outcome of this be that you and you alone are glorified and that your people are built up, edified and made better than they were when they came into this stream. I pray these blessings in Jesus name. Amen. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse eight. It says to the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. This is Paul talking one more time for emphasis to the unmarried and the widow. I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. That is the word of God for the people of God. So I got a confession to make. Married people tend to have this sentiment within themselves where they worry about their single friends. Um, there is this self-centeredness that we can tend to have as married people where we wonder why in the world does not everybody live like us? Why isn't everybody trying to figure out how to COVID educate their kids? Why is not everybody married with children? Why is not everybody in the same stage of life, phase of life that we are in. And so uh, it is a secret amongst married people. And I think the married folks that are on this stream would agree and would be willing to admit that we tend to worry about our single friends. We tend to pray for our single friends that they will get hitched up, hooked, uh, connected. You got to be careful saying that word hooked up these days uh, because it means something different but connected to uh, somebody that they can be in a deep and romantic and long lasting relationship with. Uh, here is when I discovered that there is something problematic about that. It, it was uh, maybe a month or two ago, uh, a friend of me and Carla's was at the house who is single, and, and we got to talking about just life and dealing with life during COVID. And uh, somehow in the discussion, it came out that uh, during her uh, experience with um, during COVID, during the pandemic, somehow it came out what her Saturday mornings looked like. That on Saturday morning, she sleeps late into the morning. I'm talking about past nine o'clock. I'm talking about waking up at 10 o'clock ish on a Saturday. And all of a sudden the light bulb went off in my head that single people have the upper hand. 
You see, all the time we have been scrolling Instagram and scrolling Facebook or whatever your social media channel of choice might happen to be, and it is the merry people and the dating people that are popping off uh, talking about how great their life is. Here, look at a picture uh, of my kid at the apple orchard. Here, look at a picture of my family at the pumpkin patch. Here, look at a picture of my family on our summer vacation. Here, look at a picture of me and the hubby and our anniversary picture or our wedding picture on our anniversary. Oh, here, look at a picture of me and my hubby out on a date night. Uh, social media tends to be deep with celebrating the lives of married people and not only married people, but married people with children. But from this conversation with our friend, what I then started to realize and unpacked further through this conversation was that in a lot of ways, she has the upper hand. And the reality is that is what Paul says to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8, is that in actuality, single people have the upper hand. Uh, Paul talks about there the fact that single people can be devoted and undistracted. They can have their lives devoted to the Lord. But may I submit to you that not only can your life be committed and dedicated to the Lord, it can also be dedicated to yourself. Yeah, that's right, to your own health, to being able to sleep beyond 6.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning when some toddler gets up out of the bed and does not understand the concept of sleep in Saturday, but is ready for somebody to make them breakfast and somebody to be downstairs with them watching cartoons or whatever they happen to want to watch. The reality is, single people, I want you to take away from this sermon, from these sermons that we do on singleness, I want you, if you take away nothing else from this, is the fact that you should let nobody shame you for your singleness, let nobody make you feel like your status is some sort of status of deficiency, because the reality is there is a blessing that comes along with singleness. Once again, Paul says that y'all have the upper hand when it comes to singleness, when it comes to life. I, I want to share with you three things that I want to encourage you to do as you approach this season of singleness. And then I will um, be done with it and y'all can go on with your Sunday. Um, the first thing that I want you to consider is that you need to approach this season with contentment. That's right. Approach this season with contentment. What did Paul tell Timothy? Paul told Timothy that godliness with contentment is great gain. He said godliness with contentment is great gain. Here it is. There are some that are single that are listening to this that are happy in their single life. They are not looking to change their status. I want you to leave this realizing that that is totally okay. There are also some that are single that are listening to this that do want to change their status. They do hope to start dating. They do hope to be married. They do want to have children. Some are single with children. There are people who fit into this category of single. Um, this group is not a monolith. This group is made up of, of a diverse group of people who claim this status of single. But the reality is one thing that I want to challenge you to focus on during this time is contentment. Right. Being uh, satisfied with my situation, not complacent, but satisfied with my situation. Here's the difference here. Contentment means that I acknowledge that this is the place that I am. This is the place where God has me and I'm OK with that. Complacency says I am dissatisfied, but I don't feel like I have the agency to change my situation, so I'm gonna sit in my situation. And those are two totally different things. I want you to sit in this place of contentment, this place of being satisfied with the status that God has me in, because in any status that a person finds themselves, here is the key question that you need to be asking. The key question that you need to be asking is how can God get the most glory out of my life in my current situation? Whether I'm single, whether I'm dating, whether I'm married, whether I'm married with children, whether I am married with children and those children are grown and they are out of the house, whether I am uh, caring for aging parents, the question remains, in what way can God get the most glory out of my life regardless of my status? And so be content there, right? Be content that if I am single right now, that then, then I am fine if this is the will of God for my life during this season. This is not even to suggest even that it is the will of God 
in your life for you to be single in this season. But if it is God's will for your life for you to be single in this season, be content in that space. Paul says that y'all are good. And I want to emphasize to you that you are good, right? Like you are free. You can move how you want to move, when you want to move, without accountability to anybody else, without checking in with anybody else. You can do what you want to do, when you want to do it. There is an amazing freedom that comes along with it. Not only do you have freedom, but you've got options. Yeah, Because the reality is everybody that got somebody ain't happy with that somebody. Right. They are uh, hitched. They are locked down. They have made their decisions. And some people, whether they want to admit it or not, regret the decisions that they have made. If you are single, you got options. It, it is still a if you want to think about it in these terms, it is still a multiple choice um, uh, test. And you have not filled in any of the bubbles. You've got options. So not only do I want you in this season to approach this season with contentment, but secondly, approach this season fo focusing on self-development. Um, I remember I was living uh, in South Shore and um, and I was single at the time. This was in my uh, early 20s and was single at the time and was living in like this was my second apartment that I had ever had living on my own. And um, I, I had like habits that were like not good habits, like go get Taco Bell at 11 o'clock at night on, uh, on Stony Island and come home, sit up late, eat the Taco Bell, leave the Taco Bell, sitting out in the living room, right? Like those kinds of habits. Get up in the morning, eat cereal, sitting on the sofa, watching TV, might just leave that sofa bowl sitting right there with just a little bit of tiny milk left in there that I didn't drink. And that bowl might just sit there until I got back home later on that day, right? Just single stuff. Forget to flush the toilet. Leave the seat up on the toilet. Leave my stuff anywhere around the house. Just single stuff. And um, I, I remember, so, so not only that, but like my apartment looked like a single person's apartment, right? It was nice, it was nicely furnished, but walls were all white, uh, cause those types of things just didn't matter. It was neat, I wouldn't call it clean, but it was neat-ish. Um, but what I started to realize, and I, and I still remember putting this list up on my refrigerator, is that I started to realize that I didn't wanna be single anymore, but my lifestyle was not suitable for me not being single. Here's what I mean by that. Um, there are some sisters that would just would have been down for like all of that. But I, I started to think about who's the type of woman that I want, right? Like I don't want to just not be single for the sake of like just having somebody. Um, there's some single people that have learned that lesson that like, just having like a living, breathing human being is not enough, but that you actually need somebody that you're compatible with, that you connect with right, that you gel with well, like all those things. And so I knew that I, I was looking for a particular type of woman. And what I started to reflect on was like, that particular type of woman is not gonna appreciate this particular type of situation. And so I wrote down a list on my refrigerator of like all the things that I needed to improve about myself. Um, including like my surroundings in my apartment. And so I was like, the woman that I want to date is physically fit. And so I need to be physically fit. I wrote things down like, the woman that I want to date is going to come in and see this apartment and like, uh. and so I need to put some paint on these walls. I need to start keeping my place cleaner. This leaving the cereal bowl just sitting out all the time, like, ain't gonna work, right? Like, there is a different person that you have to morph into being. Some of these spaces in this house, some of these walls that are sparse that need something on it, bro, you're gonna have to put something on these walls. These light bulbs that are out and you're just too lazy to change them, you're gonna have to do something about that. And so I had this list on my refrigerator and I started doing those things. I started working out. I'm over there by La Rabita Hospital getting my jog in in South Shore um, every day or a few days a week, like getting myself together, getting physically fit because these are values that I placed upon myself for the person 
um, that I wanted to be in a relationship with. And, um, and so long story short, I ended up meeting Carla not too long after that. And, and, and I do want to say that the person that she met when we started talking was a different person than I was just a couple months before. And I really believe that, that God took me through that period, that season of time of self-development, of, of getting myself together, of doing things in a different way, in a better way, so that I could be ready for the person that God was gonna connect me with. Listen, what I'm not saying is that you are not enough as you are but we can all be reflective on the fact that there is some growth that needs to happen in us. And I think that it is critical and good for us to use this time of being single to develop ourselves. What, what did Joshua say when Joshua went through that camp? The Lord is about to do um, some things uh, on their behalf. He is about to give them a great deliverance. What does Joshua say? Joshua goes throughout the entire camp and he says to them, I want you to consecrate, consecrate yourselves. But tomorrow the Lord shall do amazing things among you. Um, to my single brothers and sisters that are out there, that are out there with expectation about what they want God to do, who they want God to send, who they want God to bring into their lives, or simply who they want to pursue. Because let me say a word about this. There's some people that have been taught, like, right, like that he who findeth the wife finds a good thing, and so they are not shooting their shot because they think they're just supposed to lay back in the cut. Let me liberate your theology for a second. If you had game and you had a mouthpiece before the Lord found you, the Lord desires to use your mouthpiece for you to find who you want to find. If you are a sister and you are waiting around for somebody to come find you, that might be the reason that you are single today. The reality is it is 2020. If you see somebody that you want to pursue and that you are willing to pursue, you better open up your mouth. You better DM whatever your way of doing it is. Be assertive and going to get what you want. Because here's my piece, right? We cannot simultaneously say that like sisters can go get their education. Sisters can go get the career they want, go get the job they want, go buy the condo they want, go buy the house that they want, go buy the car that they want, all those things. Oh, but when it comes to relationships, just wait. It is okay to be equally as aggressive and as assertive in every, as you are in every other area of your life when it comes to your romantic life. If you're in a relationship right now and you're trying to see where this thing is going, you do not need to wait around for a brother to catch the hint that you want this to go to the next level. You can have the conversation since it is not 1950. Let the church say amen. Um, so, so not only do we talk about uh, contentment and self-development, Joshua tells them, um, Joshua tells them, consecrate yourselves for the Lord. Tomorrow the Lord shall do amazing things among you. Again, I remind you, set yourself apart self-develop, get yourself ready, get yourself into a place and a posture if you wish to no longer be single um, for your singleness um, to connect with somebody um, that you can connect well with. Let me also drop this point before I get into my last point. I, I want to just say to us that um, some of us just actually need um, a time of singleness to get ourselves together. This is something that I didn't fill in about that detail when I was sharing my story. Um, I had been dating like in a long term relationship before I went into this period of singleness. And um, there was some necessity to this period of being by myself. And that's a word that God is speaking to somebody right now is that your singleness is out of necessity for your self-development. Don't rush into relationships just because you want somebody to fill the void. It is like, sometimes we can function like that, uh, those aqua pauses when like, right there when I wasn't saying anything, right? And when you're in a conversation and you have those pauses, somebody feels like they, there's a need for them to fill the space. That awkward pause is also symbolic of that awkward pause, that moment that we have when we are single and we don't like that feeling. We, we feel like there's something wrong with us and that we got to have somebody and that we need somebody to affirm us. And so sometimes we just feel the space. We need to be cautious about who we let into our heart. The Bible says guard your heart with all diligence. We need to be vigilant about who we let into that space. Um, 
Sometimes we need that time to just better ourselves, to repair, to heal, to develop. Don't be afraid of being by yourself and being single. Uh, let, let me push on, let me push on. Um, you can also approach this season as a time of self-discovery. I think the dope thing about being single is that you can do whatever the heck you wanna do whenever you wanna do it. And it is not about pleasing another person, it's just about what you wanna do. What do you wanna watch? Right, some brothers are single because I like, they like sitting around playing 2K. And bro, if that's what you like to do, and, and in every relationship you've had in the past, like the sister don't like that you, or your partner doesn't like that you sit, like to sit around and play 2K and that's what you like to do. If you ain't ready to give up 2K, then it's fine to be single and play 2K. It's fine to be single and I like to sit around and all day Sunday I like to do nothing but sit on my couch, look at my fantasy stats and watch football all day. Singleness is a time of self-discovery, right? Like when you get married and have kids, like Sunday is not your time anymore. Saturday you like to just sit around and watch college football. You ain't trying to be um, kids soccer practice, ballet, tap dance, AAU basketball, you're trying to do all those things. Singleness is perfect for you. Singleness is a time of self-discovery, of determining what do I like? What are the things that please me? What are the things that excite me? Singleness is, a, is an amazing time of self-discovery and I think we should lean into it. Let me share with you, uh, fourthly and finally, um, that you should approach this season as a time to develop healthy friendships. Um, all companionship does not have to be romantic. Right, we can, we all need companionship, but, it doesn't but it's not a necessity that we have to have romantic companionship. Because um, here's a secret that like, married people don't tell single people, um, is that like, married life is not like a live enactment of the drunken love song, it is not. Like marriage is not just deep lust and hands all over each other and every night smashing. Like marriage is not that, right? Um, but marriage is a whole lot of time spent together as partners, as friends, as confidants, as support systems. That's what it really looks like. You can have all that stuff without the romantic side. And I think some of us need to really explore that. I think that, that if we wanna be honest in Christianity, there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of homophobia that will cause people to believe that in order to check these boxes, you gotta have somebody of the opposite sex that you're in a romantic relationship with in order to engage in those things. But the reality is, like a lot of the things that people even are seeking to be cured by dating or by getting married, that stuff can be cured just by having healthy friendships. For some people, they trying to just not have to go on vacation with by themselves anymore. You don't need a husband for that. You don't need a wife for that. You need a, you need a friend for that. You need a companion for that. For some people, like, they try to go on a dinner by themselves or they want to Netflix and chill. Like, you do not need a whole spouse with a wedding in order to Netflix and chill. Um, you need a companion to do those types of things. And so I, I, I think that it is, I think that there's such an opportunity for us to dismantle these ideas and these notions. Better yet, let's call them social constructs about what it means for people to be able to move through life. Um, and that in order to be successful in life, you have to check these boxes and specifically the box of marriage. Um, but you can do that through developing healthy friendships. Um, let me close by just saying, um, from time to time, uh, Layla and Carla will be out of the house and it'll be quiet. Nothing's happening in the house. And I can watch TV anywhere in the house I wanna watch it. I can leave clothes anywhere I want to around the house, shoes, in the living room, in the middle of the floor, socks on the other side of the room. Um, I can watch whatever I wanna watch on TV. 
I can leave my cereal bowls anywhere that I want to leave them. I can let the dishes pile up in the sink without regard, especially when they are out overnight for something. I can let the dishes pile up in the sink because it does not bother me, but it does bother my partner. And it is during those times of being home alone, whole house to myself, only noise in the house, noise that I create, that I realize that singleness is dope. And so for those of y'all that are single, quit letting the church, quit letting your family cause you to feel like you have some deficiency, um, that you are uh, less than somebody else because of your status. Paul says, y'all got the upper hand. Paul says, I, I wish, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8, Paul says, I wish everybody could have it like I have it. Y'all are good. Y'all are absolutely good. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for pushing us and challenging us to, um, to think about singleness differently. I pray, God, that we will challenge the constructs that we have been socialized into that cause us to shame one another for our status. I pray for those that are single, God, that you will give them a deep spirit of contentment with where they are. I pray, God, for those that are single that desire to date and that desire to be married, God, I pray that you will meet them where they are, that you will give them the desire of their heart. I pray that ultimately we will truly learn as, as a church, as the body of Christ, to love, celebrate, and appreciate everybody no matter what their status. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.